Okay. Greetings. My name is Miranda Beatles, National Programs Chair for Lambda Sigma Sigma Alumni Chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, located in Stockbridge, Georgia. We would like to welcome you to our Women's Wellness Program. Our Women's Wellness Program initiative is part of our national programs and is one of our essential programs. The program is geared toward creating steps to make long-term commitment towards wellness and well-being. We seek to provide relevant information and educations on issues such as mental health, domestic and intimate partner abuse, stress management, nutrition, and much more. Today, we will have a host of great speakers that will be speaking on spiritual, mental, and physical entities. We will have an awesome moderator who is my soror, Christian Rawls, who will be taking it over in just a few minutes to introduce our wonderful sorors for this great panel. Christian. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> how are you? I'm great. I am, so, I am so thrilled and so honored to be the facilitator of this uh, wellness program. And I'm yes. so excited to speak to all the wonderful speakers we have in this lineup. So I'm ready to dive right in. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you were able to do it with your beautiful self. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. Take it away, hon. Okay. Um, we are going to start. Uh, we have three different topics that we're going to cover today, and we're going to dive right in into uh, our first topic, which is our physical health. So I am going to introduce to you Soror Sabrina Evans. She is a fitness and wellness coach. Hey. Hi. How are you, Soror? I am well. Say it with me. Let's get physical. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about the physical health. So um, why is it important to get healthy and um, how do you even get started with everything that's out there, all the information that's out there and all the diets that are out there? Where do we start and why is it important for us to begin? Awesome. So I want to tell you a few snippets. I started my fitness journey several years ago. Like I said, I had a baby at 40 and I was blessed with him, but I also made my mind up that I want to be around for him. So that's why I started my fitness journey. So I tell all my clients, it has to be a why. Why do you want to start? Um, why, what, what's going to make you be successful in this? And if you know your whys, um, that'll help um, improve the longevity of you working out and you focusing on nutrition. And why you awesome. want to work out? So many reasons to work out. Some of the biggest reasons people want to work out, of course, is to lose weight. But some of the reasons that I also want to work out because it helps reduce your stroke. Um, it changes your mood, produces endorphins in your body, reduces anxiety and stress and depression, diabetes, just so many things that working out. Um, helps to impact your body. So you choose one of those reasons, whatever your reason is, as long as you do it. Absolutely. And one of my reasons is to get all fine for Centennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, on, on my next question will be how many days per week do I need to work out? And should I eat before or should I eat after? What are some of those tricks and, and uh, you know, some tips yeah. that you can you know, in, incorporate, what, where do I start? Okay. So if you're a beginner and you're starting, I would suggest two days a week. Um, mm -hmm. For myself, I work out three days a week. Um, it just helps improve my flexibility. So many things that it helps to relieve uh, whatever I'm going through. But I'll say average, if you want to start, start two days a week. I have my clients first start with stretching. Stretching is so important. Pilates yoga is so important to loosen up the body, uh, your hip abductors, your arms, your back. Get everything um, um, so you improve your flexibility. And then next, I have my clients start on their walk. Walking, getting that vitamin D, soaking it up. That's their first week. And that's something easy. We all know how to walk. We all know how to stretch. Next thing I tell people to do is focus on whatever meal prep and meal planning you're going to do. There's one thing you can do to start working out. But if you're not planning your meals and if um, you're not making um, intentional decisions on what you're putting in your body, then there's really not a big reason for you to continue to work our process because you're not going to see the big change. Um, before um, working out, I would suggest lean proteins. 
protein shakes, sometimes um, maybe a peanut butter and an apple, something mm -hmm. very light. After mm -hmm. you work out, of course, you want to have your protein, your post-workout shakes, um, just to make sure you fuel the body and fill the body up. Tuna fish is really good if you like tuna. Um, I'm a proponent of um, having low meat intake, uh, but then also making sure you have a lot of vegetables and nutrients uh, to fill the body and fuel the body also. That's some great information. Um, and one of, uh, one of the biggest things that I think all of us want to know is, what are some of those exercises for those target areas, like your uh, muffin tops, the, mm -hmm. the thighs and the wings and all of that? Um, is it more important to do cardio or weightlifting? Just Both. briefly tell me something about that. Both. Both. I would say first, go ahead and start with the cardio. Let's build your endurance up. And then we're going to incorporate weights into the body. Planks are very good. Sit-ups. The, the main workouts we used to do when we were in gym and we were physical and we were outside and we stayed lean. Those are the same workouts <laughs> that you want to incorporate um, into a beginning session of your workout. So, yeah. Thank you. Those were some really great tips. And I am going to definitely put them into practice, um, especially like the 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 snacks like the peanut butter and the right. apple and things Let's like plan that them out. Plan them out. work out so yeah. thank you so much for that vital information I, and, and i appreciate it for all of our viewers i hope they're taking all of that in so thank, thank you so much you. thank you for having me you're welcome next we are going to um tackle some very important some a topic that is very important is our mental health and who is going to briefly discuss our mental health and give us some tips on that is our soror Miriam Hassan Autry. She is a marriage and family therapist and a certified advanced addiction and drug counselor. Hi, how are you Soror Autry? I am blessed. How are you? I am so well. Um, I want to ask you a few questions about a very important topic, um, and it is on our mental health. And so I want to ask you a few questions about that. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, is it normal for me to feel stressed um, and depressed? And what are some of the signs um, to identify stress and depression? So first, we want to just be honest. The onset of the pandemic was abrupt. It left us to be able to just become these, you know, magical people as mothers typically are and just trying to come up with these plans. We had to learn how to develop schooling, daycare, if we had kids in college, social activities, work. It was just everything that just kind of flopped on us. These things had to be met but it just came out of nowhere. So with that, is it normal to feel overwhelmed, stressed and, and, and depressed about it? Absolutely. Now, some of the things that you absolutely must look at are some of the things that may be signs toward you knowing if you are suffering from some of these things. So some of the things are more or less like isolation, withdrawal, showing a lack of interest in things that typically interest you, persistent sadness, excessive sleeping, and trouble concentrating and just like an overall increase of agitation. We know that things are going to come. We know that a lot of things just happen. You're stuck in the house. You don't have that outlet. You probably won't have the ability to socialize like normal. And even with Sora Evans speaking about exercising. So there were so many things that just had to happen to meet the current needs that caused a lot of people to go into these uh, feelings of depression and high stress. Okay, those are some really good tips. Um, another question that I would like to ask is how important is it to confide in someone? And um, should it be a professional or a friend? Um, what can I do to even find a professional counselor? So first of all, let's be honest with this thing. 
we can all admit that texting is a way that we connect with people, family and friends, but that doesn't always mean it's the best way. We know that sometimes a text message, an email, you know, it can have a tone that may not be there. So we really want to learn that if we want to connect with somebody, if we really want to check on somebody, the best way is really to try to reach out and call someone. Um, Everybody reacts differently in stressful situations. So it's really important that we are connecting with other people. And then even in this platform that we're having now that we have video chats because looking at somebody can give you a better sense of, are they truly okay? Um, and knowing that everyone may have uh, situations where they're feeling isolated and alone. And so you may have to go a little step further of reaching out to someone in addition there are a lot of professional resources that's available and there are some that's being um, uh, uh, scrolled below that gives you information on some hotlines that you can call that are free of charge that are 24 seven that you can call and just say, Hey, I need help. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. I just need this resource. So there are a lot of things that are out there that people can utilize to try to meet their needs during this pandemic and beyond. Thank you so much for that, Sora Archery. And everyone that is listening in, take a look at what's scrolling at the bottom of the screen. That is a really good resource if you are in need of finding some professional help. And um, thank you, Sora Archery, for just giving us some tips on how to um, look for the signs and then what to do um, with reaching out and communicating with others. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, our um, next and final speaker for this evening is going to be Soror Angel Kelly. She is an author, educator, and motivational speaker, and she's going to briefly um, discuss with me about the spiritual health. Um, the, our very last topic here, our spiritual health, which is also important in the wholeness and wellness um, of an individual. So, hello. And, uh, how are you, Sora? <laughs> I am great. How are you? I am well. Um, and I am so excited to talk to you about our spiritual uh, health. So I'm going to dive right in to uh, some of the questions here. Okay. Okay. Um, so what is the most important thing that you suggest someone should do to maintain a healthy spiritual lifestyle? And how do we juggle all of um, the, the, the family, the career, and, and not lose the perspective of God? Very good. Great question. So the first thing I recommend for all people, um, male, female, everyone, is prayer. Um, because I am in, uh, I can witness that I know prayer changes things over and over and over again. So prayer. So I encourage people to practice prayer as often as possible because we have so many distractions, so many things stresses us out. But when we pray, it causes us or allows us to block out the noise. That's what I call it. Block out the noise, the negativity, the stress and all that. So you can connect with wisdom and inspiration, of course, and God. So prayer, trusting God. Um, we tr tend to trust everything else. We tend to trust man. We even tend to trust our vehicle. We believe once we get in our vehicle, it's going to transport us to wherever our destination is. And we don't want to have a second thought. But you know what? How about trusting God? You know, go ahead and try it. I tried it myself. Trust <laughs> God first and then trust that vehicle of work and get you to your destination. Just add God in it. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and um, I really just appreciate your energy because it, it, it does remind us to do that. Just, that very thing is to trust God. Um, my next question, um, what would you say to a person who is striving to renew their mind and make better decisions? And um, in challenging and bad situations, how would you encourage someone to go through their challenges? Okay, well, first I would say if that person is trying to work on changing their mindset, um, that's very difficult for most of us if we're used to being in a certain place in our life. That's very difficult to transition to the next level. So I first encourage that person to guard their heart and protect their peace. 
Meaning, um, if you want to protect what you're trying to strive for, you have to block out that toxicity or people that may bring you down or the negative energy. And then you need to incorporate, once again, prayer and also surround yourself around people that's going to boost you or lift you up um, through inspiration. So protect your heart and guard your peace. Um, and also spend some alone time. Um, sometimes we're around people so much and we are receiving so much stuff and that's add more um, distraction um, and it makes things cloudy. Get some alone time. That'll help. And then you can hear um, from God what it is he needs you to do. Um, you also ask, what could I do or what I suggest for someone to do if they um, need to be encouraged, if they're going through a bad situation? Mm -hmm. I could just speak for my personal life. There's a lesson in everything. I don't care how bad it is. So I first would um, encourage that person to see what is the good in that bad situation. It may sound crazy, but there is something good in that situation. It may even be a learning lesson uh, for that. Also reflect on what you could have done differently or better. And then be encouraged, even though you're going through that storm, better days are coming. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Better days are coming. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and my very last question, uh, what are two ways to feed or restore your spiritual life? Okay. Well, I believe whatever you put in yourself or whatever you hear, see, listen to, I believe whatever you put in the most in your whole self, that's what's going to come out. So if you're putting nasty stuff, ugly stuff, listen to the wrong things, that's what's going to come out. So to help you to restore, be careful and be mindful what you're listening to. If it's something toxic or it's not good for your spiritual being, it's not going to help you. So the more the good stuff you put in you, it will help um, um, shift um, your your mindset and your 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 whole person as a whole. Um, for example, music. Um, I'm just one of those people I listen to a lot of types of music. But when I need that spiritual refill or re restoration, spiritual music, that's just me. But I encourage you all to try it. Just try it. <laughs> Scripture <laughs> as well. The word never changes. It stays the same. If you're trying to look for... Um, inspiration um, through a textbook, you're not going to find it. But try some other things, for example, for the Bible or scripture. And just to, so you can be encouraged, if you feel like that's not a purpose for you, I encourage you to go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. For God says he has a plan for your life to sponsor you and not hurt you, says the Lord. And be encouraged. Just try it. Yes, that was a great, great scripture. And it, it this whole forum has definitely um blessed me and encouraged me and educated me on a lot of different topics so i want to thank you so much uh sora kelly for giving us those tips on rebuilding our spiritual health thank my you my pleasure my pleasure that is going to conclude our wellness program I um, I want to just recap. We talked about the uh, physical and how to identify uh, where to start uh, with our meal plans and uh, what else did we learn? We learned about uh, what tar what to target as far as our exercises um, and with our mental health, um, who to contact for our uh like whether it's a professional and then also um, with our spiritual health, how to restore our spiritual health. Those are three great topics. And I do appreciate all the speakers. I want to have a, uh, give a special thank you to all the speakers that spoke today. And I want to also thank uh, Sora M Miranda Beatles, our chair of the national programs and um, and our committee chair for the chapter. I also want to thank Soror uh, Joseph, uh, uh, Soror Chantel Joseph. She mm -hmm. is the chair of the health and wellness program and she helped coordinate this forum today. And also um, last but not least, our great basilisk uh, Tanya Blackshear and just for all of Lambda Sigma Sigma putting this together today. And I am so honored and thrilled that you all chose me to facilitate this forum. Yes, thank you, Christian, so much for allowing us to uh, bask in your light and all of your energy for moderating our, our wellness program this evening. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, sis. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, all of my sorors who have given such a plethora of information. Um, Soros Kelly, 
um, you know, I'm gonna have to pass the plate. I got a, I got a collection for you. Um, Sora Evans, um, I am gonna get physical with you. Um, all of those excellent tips on what to do, what to target, and just how to just rest and be able to know what to do in order to get started on that physical journey. Sora, uh, Miriam, Hassan, Autry, I appreciate you for giving us these wonderful tips and knowing that it's okay not to be okay. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Sora Chantel Joseph, I appreciate you for uh, collaborating this event tonight. That was an excellent job. I, I so appreciate you as being my sub-chair. Last but not least, thank you, Basilisk Tanya Blackshear, for allowing us to have this program and all of your expertise. We appreciate you and we love you. Thank you so much. Have an awesome night.